Well, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and I want to thank the committee for indulging me uh, today as well. Um, the, this amendment uh, goes to something that I've been working on uh, since I've got elected, uh, essentially trying to uh, bring to light uh, the, the situation of uh, a, a company in Canada uh, called MindGeek, uh, which claims to be uh, one, of the, one of the largest uh, com internet companies in the world. Uh, they have uh, 4.5 trillion uh, individual hits on their website every month. That's more than Google, that's more than Facebook combined. Um, this is, if we're trying to hold, uh, if this bill is attempting to hold uh, the web giants accountable, um, this kind of uh, amendments is precisely what a bill that's seeking to hold web giants accountable ought to be doing. Um, this company, MindGeek, or and its subsidiary Pornhub, have uh, recently been in the news uh, as uh, extreme, being extremely exploitative of uh, both youth and, and women. And this has been something that has been brought to the attention of the government. Um, we have we have had entire ethics committee study on this as well. And I was uh, several uh, fourteen uh, recommendations have come out of that ethics committee report. Um, and that report, I would point out, was unanimously adopted um, by the ethics committee. And so, uh, one of those things would be to ensure that. Uh, sexually explicit content isn't falling into the hands of children, uh, and that that is what the, my amendment uh, seeks to to, sh pr to pursue, um, to get the CRTC to prevent that from happening. Um, the other thing that uh, comes up often uh, when when dealing with uh, the company MindGeek is just how uh, racist and misogynist this company is, given given the fact that they have entire genres dedicated to uh, sexually explicit material that is specifically violent, specifically racist, specifically sexist, um, specifically degrading, and specifically torture. These are these aren't these aren't like uh, things that are sub like beside these these issues. This is the the content is explicitly this for that very reason. Um, uh, and, and these are like genre topics um, uh, that, are, that are pursued by this particular company and, and they are exploiting um, women and children in order to um, be, um, gain, gain commercial interest in this and, and make money off of it. So um, I, I would suggest that this would be, uh, these amendments would be a, a small step in the right direction uh, and I, I look forward to having the support of uh, this committee. Uh, to get these amendments uh, across the... Thank you, Mr. Pearson. Uh, Mr. House, Father? Thank you so much, Madam Chair. And, and, and while I appreciate all the work that my colleague, Mr. Pearson, has done in, in this area, I, I think this is somewhat uh, funny in the sense that this entire discussion has been about the Conservatives arguing that content is about to be regulated by the CRTC, and this is introducing an amendment for content to be regulated by the CRTC. <laughs> Um, I, 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 I can't even get over that, um, but I, I think this is exactly what this amendment does. It is saying that user-generated content should now be regulated to prevent uh, children from seeing sexually explicit content, etc. Now, if we're talking about illegal content, there's another bill that hopefully will come forward shortly that will deal with illegal content, including uh, the illegal content that may potentially be uh, existing that's referred to in subsection 6 here. Um, but but I, I, I don't believe that this is appropriate. This is actually asking the CRTC to get into content. We have the Canadian Broadcasting Standards Council that already deals with this type of issue. Uh, I don't think the CRTC needs to, and certainly not in introducing into C11, uh, going into user-generated content. Um, so uh, I actually uh, do not support the bill. And I also would note that in terms of preventing the broadcasting to children of programs that include sexually explicit content, I think that's a question for parents to decide what their children can and cannot see if they're minors um, and not the government. Uh, so in, in any case, I, I, I don't support this amendment and I, I think it really goes against everything the Conservatives have been saying at this committee uh, for the last month. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. House. Father, Mr. Julian. Madam Chair, Mr. Vierson has his hand raised. Um, Mr. Vierson spoke. I have Mr. Housefather, Mr. Julian. Mr. Vierson can speak after Mr. Julian. 
Uh, Mr. Julian. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I mean, this, this is a serious subject, and I think it needs to be taken seriously. I, I agree with Mr. Housefather uh, that this would be the only part of C11 that actually uh, prevents the broadcasting of, of programs. Um, it, it, and it is uh, interesting, even what I've seen online from Conservative MPs uh, uh, railing against censorship, and uh, there are no provisions in Bill C-11 that deal with censorship. Uh, uh, this um, uh, amendment for Mr. I, I would suggest of the four, uh, there are three for Mr. Beerson, one for Mr. Nader, uh, actually do prevent the broadcasting of programs. I think, though, that there it is a welcome uh, amendment given the, the concerns that are around both protecting children, but also ensuring the broadcasting of programs uh, that uh, are, are produced through sexual exploitation or co coercion. Uh, that, that is something that I, I do think we need to take into consideration. Now, uh, Mr. Nader and Mr. Veerson, between them, have produced four very, very similar amendments. And each one of them uh, seeks to do the same thing, but is worded differently. Uh, so obviously, uh, we have to make a choice as members of this committee as to which uh, which approach uh, that uh, we prefer. And uh, I would I would set aside CPC four, CPC five, and CPC six that are very very similar but have different wording. And I would look at CPC seven, uh, which seeks to protect the health and well-being of children by preventing the broadcasting to children of programs that include sexually explicit content and safeguard. Uh, human rights of women and marginalized people by preventing the broadcasting of programs that include pornographic material that is produced through sexual exploitation or, or co coercion. Uh, I will be voting uh, down the other amendments. I will be voting for this choice of the CPC-7. As I mentioned, each one of them is similar, but to my mind, CPC-7 is the best approach. And I, I think it is important to note that this is the this would be, if we pass this amendment, the only part of C11 that actually prevents the broadcasting, that that stops broadcasting. So uh, it is ironic. I think we should note that the Conservatives are introducing uh, the only amendment that prevents broadcasting, that that censors broadcasting. I in the entire uh, bill C11. I certainly hope that Conservatives, if we adopt this amendment, will. Uh, speak to that and say that they introduced the one portion of C11 that actually addresses uh, the issue of preventing the broadcasting of programs or censoring programs that are harmful. And, and uh, if conservatives are, are being honest, they will uh, say to uh, the folks that uh, they are in communication with that they introduced the one element of C11 that prevents broadcasting. In this case, I believe it is in the public interest and I commend them for that, and that's why I will be supporting CPC-7, which I think is the best of the four, uh, and I will be voting against CPC-4, 5, and 6. Uh, thank you, Mr. Julian. Now, Mr. Vierson has something he wanted to say. Uh, I just uh, want to thank Mr. Julian for his support for CPC-7. Um, I would just note that uh, this is not directed at uh, user-generated content. Uh, this is dealing specifically with the broadcasters and um, that I have uh, spoken to this bill uh, already way back when it was C10 um, and repeatedly mentioned the fact that these are the types of things that we were looking for in a bill like this, not uh, not a uh, not a picking winning winners and losers that uh, some of the other aspects of this bill does. Thank you. Now, before we go to voting on this. I just wanted to let Madame the President, know. Yes, the, uh, yes, Mr. Yes, Shampoo? We have Mr. O we, we have, have Mr. Mr. Shampoo, and we, do we have um, somebody else? We have Mr. Coteau and then Mr. Bittle, who's raised their hands. So we have Shampoo, Coteau, Bittle. Yeah, Bittle right. will go first. Uh, Martin. Uh, Madame la Présidente, moi. Madam Chair, I don't, uh, I don't agree completely with Mr. Julian but on this one. I believe that over the last 15 years or so, we've had very many similar uh, amendments which uh, go beyond the scope of the uh, Broadcast Act. And I'd like Mr. Miller's opinion on that. Um, there were some programming that were 
and we're talking about torture uh, or some such thing, and uh, <clears throat> perhaps a failure to, re to respect uh, human rights. Now, any attempt to control content, uh, I think that's, that's pretty rich coming from the Conservatives. Uh, I understand the intent. I understand uh, the goodwill involved and the, the noble motive, but uh, we can't uh, con condemn, if you will, sexual content. It, there is a responsibility on the part of parents, and the, com the uh, committee would be going much beyond its mandate if we were to start to uh, decide on what content is acceptable and not. Uh, for those that is uh, trans uh, distributed on uh, pornographic platforms, Mr. Vierson mentioned earlier, that uh, belong to MindGeek, uh, there are currently laws that would um, prevent the exploitation of children, first of all, but also of uh, more vulnerable populations, including uh, women in certain instances. There are other laws out there to, to do that. And I don't think that this is the appropriate uh, bill to deal with it with. The intentions are good, but I don't think it belongs in the bill that we are currently uh, seized with. Thank you, uh, Mr. Shampoo. Um, Mr. Poto? Do you want to go first? You go first. So, um, I just, I have a quick question, um, maybe to the movers if possible, like, but it kind of captures four, five, and six. So, you know, I understand what's trying to be accomplished here, and I'll just pick out like the racism piece. So it says that um, on all three that they're going to look for ways, well, you're going to prevent broadcasting of programs that um, uh, display any type of racism, for example. But how do you like, you know, prevent racism by not broadcasting racism? Or for example, you know, what about a news story, right? Um, if a, um, you know, if there's an act of racism, can you not tell it anymore in the news? So I just wanted to get some clarity on that because I don't know how you prevent these things without talking about these things. So I don't know if I can ask a question to the movers or if I, I don't know, maybe it's just a statement. Mr. Vierson, would you like to respond to Mr. Koto, please? Yeah, for sure. Um, so what I have attempted to do is uh, first just basically put in the like, uh, sexually explicit content that depicts racism. Um, there are complete genres of sexually explicit content that the 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 very idea of it is is about being racist, right? That's right. that, and that's what we want to prevent from being broadcasted. Not not that there is um, not that there there is no racism being broadcast. Like the it's not it, it's the sexually explicit content being the first indicator and then the very fact of that being tied to um, so for for example in the current situation um, the the searches for Ukrainian women um, in particular is is going is there's a six thousand or six hundred percent increase in that search suddenly um, that that is the type of thing that we're trying trying to prevent from being broadcasted the sexually explicit content that is um, expli the, the reason for its existence is to fuel uh, a racist desire. Um, yeah. that, and that's what I'm attempting, and that's why I have right. four different versions of this um, right. to, to try to capture. It's a, it's a difficult thing to capture in language, um, but that's precisely what I'm after. And, and if I can continue, um, Madam Chair, if I still yes. have the floor. So like for, we, for yeah. No, go ahead, I'm just pointing oh, okay. out time. Okay, thank you. How do you prevent like a news story from being told that includes this kind of content if something bad happens? Yeah, so the, a news story wouldn't be uh, sexually explicit material. It's the it's a news broadcast. Well, the description would be right. Uh, what do you mean the description? Like, I mean, if they were describing something that took place, you know, that was wrong, and they were looking, you know, they they described, you know. So per yeah. perhaps perhaps what we should use then is the one that says pornographic material because pornographic material is very well understood in in Canadian law. I think sexually explicit material is understood as well, but um, the the nightly news there is not defined in Canadian law as being pornographic material. Right, right. It's the nightly news, um, and th and that's that's the identifier and preventing the broadcast of that particular material that is 
uh, f fueled or not fueled by, but is to fulfill a racist desire. Um, that is what we're trying to attempt okay. to prevent. My second question, uh, maybe more to uh, our, our folks here who are helping us. Um, and again, you know what? I'll wait until uh, until CP7. I have a question specifically that, so I'll stop there. Thank you. As we speak about CP7, before I go to Mr. Biddle, I just wanted to point out to the committee that um, a CP in CP3, there is... Uh, um, a section, um, a paragraph five in CPC four, five, six, and seven that are identical. And if one amendment is adopted, if the, let's say CP four is adopted or CPC seven is adopted, the others will have to be moved without that paragraph. Just wanted everyone to know about that. Okay, um, Mr. Biddle. Um, thank you. I, I kind of just did want to point out the irony of uh, Mr. Beerson's uh, statement and uh, to paraphrase him that uh, platforms are in, users are out. Only platforms have uh, obligations under, uh, under these sections and I think there's been a lot of derision of the, the Minister but we're hearing that uh, here today. I, I don't want to repeat uh, what Mr. House, Housefather has gone through but I, I agree with him that this is the only provision of the bill that um, is engaging in censorship and and though I uh, I respect Mr. Beerson he's worked very hard on this going back to the 42nd Parliament um, and his work through various uh, incarnations this is probably something that's better dealt with in um, future legislation which is in our um, um, which is in the minister's mandate letter for online harms and I know uh, Ms. Thomas has brought a study to um, look at that as well, and it's something that um, we really need to address. But I don't, I, I don't think this is the right, right spot to do it. Thank you, Mr. Biddle, and uh, I hope that everyone notes uh, this. And so we will not seeing anybody else with their hand up, clerk. Anybody been missing? No. Then can I? We will. I'd like to call the vote on CPC four. Mr. Biddle. Opposed. Mr. Coteau. No. Ms. Hefner. Contre. Mr. Housefather. Contre. Mr. Lewis. Opposed. Mr. Nader. In favor. Ms. Thomas. In favor. Mr. Upal. Sorry? Oh, thank you. Mr. Perkins, subbing for In Mr. Favor. Upal. I'm sorry, Mr. Perkins. In favor. Thank you. Mr. Waugh. In favor. Mr. Shampoo. Contre. Mr. Con Julian. Contre. Yes, pour four, quatre, nays, contre, seven, set. CPC four does not carry. Um, I would like to point out that we have two minutes left for the hard stop of six o'clock. There needs to be a 30 minute break for the. Uh, and when we left, uh, we had. Um, we had a, uh, we were on, um, just a minute, let me just get my head here. Uh, we were on, we had finished CPC four and we were going to go to CPC five. So Mr. Nato, or yeah, Mr. Nato. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Madam Chair. I believe uh, uh, the next few uh, clauses are under Mr. Vierson's name and I believe he's declining to move uh, the next few, and we'll be going straight to CPC 7. All right, so do I have unanimous consent to withdraw those amendments from the committee? Yeah. No um, one is raising a hand, so it's uh, obvious the, everyone uh, point is of in, order. Yes? Point of order, Madam yes. Chair. I just, I just yes, wanted Peter? to sp uh, specify, I don't believe uh, we require unanimous consent if the mover of the amendment uh, withdraws it. And I think this will be very relevant later on in the evening, which is why I'm raising it now. 
Um, I think um, I'll go to I'll go to um, Amy, but I do think that you require unanimous consent if someone wants to withdraw a motion or an amendment. I believe uh, Mr. Miller is going to take this one. Pardon, who's who's speaking, Mr. Uh, excuse me, the, the uh, legislative, legislative clerk. Oh, oh, Mr. Miller. Yes, Mr. Miller. Um, uh, yes, uh, indeed, uh, you don't need a uh, unanimous consent uh, before the amendment is moved. Once the amendment has been moved, then at that point you need unanimous consent to withdraw it. But if it's not moved oh, yet... Okay, thanks. Just so not, he's not, not moved. moving them. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mella. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that clarification. And so you, we will therefore then go straight to the CPC 7. Mr. Versen? Well, thank you, Madam Chair. And I, once again, I just want to reiterate that uh, the main thrust of this is to prevent uh, sexually explicit material from falling into the hands of children. This is something that we already do uh, on the airwaves. Uh, the CRTC is already managing this when it comes to television. Uh, we, we should not allow online platforms to have unlimited access to our children when it comes to pornographic material. Um, we, we already manage this when it comes to corner stores as well. Um, so your bricks and mortar stores. Uh, so it's it's ensuring that uh, that that would take place online as well. Um, given that we're, the intent of this bill is to uh, level level the playing field, although um, I, I'm not necessarily convinced that that's what this bill entirely does. But this, I think, would be an improvement to the bill. Therefore, I'm moving this. Um, I think that uh, that. Uh, online sexually explicit material um, should be regulated in the same way that uh, paper and also television um, are as well. So those are those are essentially my comments, uh, and I I went over it as well. Could you just for... read in uh, your the the amendment, please, into just for the record? Yep, for sure. So uh, that the bill C11 clause three be amended by adding after line 15 on page five the following. Uh, 3.1 paragraph 3.1d, the act is amended by adding the following after subparagraph uh, 4, 5, seek to pre protect the health and well-being of children by pre preventing the broadcasting to children of programs that include sexually explicit content, and 6, safeguard the human rights of women and marginalized people by preventing the broadcasting of programs that include pornographic material that is produced through explo sexual exploitation or coercion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, and so we will go to discussion of that amendment. I have Mr. Uh, Mr. Clerk, you let me know whose hands are up. Yes, Mr. Julian and Mr. Cotto. All right, Mr. Julian. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, I, I'm going to support a CPC 7. Um, but I, I want to be clear as well. Uh, this um, in C11, there is no provision for censorship. There's no uh, shutting down of freedom of speech. We we all know that there have been certain conservative MPs like Mr. Shear who've tried to pretend the contrary. Um, but we all know, uh, and anyone who has read the bill knows that um, you cannot refer to censorship uh, when it comes to C11. This, however, and it's a little ironic, but it's a conservative amendment that does introduce an element of censorship. It prevents the broadcasting to children of programs that include sexually explicit content, and it prevents the broadcasting of programs that include pornographic material that is produced through sexual exploitation or coercion. So I, I want to be clear to committee members, this is the only element of C11 that introduces censorship. It is ironic that the conservatives have, have proposed this amendment, but I support it because in this case, the censorship, the preventing of broadcasting is in the public interest. So I, I want to say that I'll be voting in favor. I believe that the public interest is upheld through this and the committee members and anyone who is watching this committee uh, through the web, uh, uh, through the House of Commons web broadcast uh, should know that this introduces an element of censorship for the first time to C11 and it's conservatives that have introduced this amendment. So I'm supporting it because it does meet public interest. But for those who say, well, C11 has some censorship in it, finally, they'll be right. Because if this amendment passes, it does introduce an element of censorship into the bill. Uh, thank you, Mr. Julian. Mr. Coteau. 
Thank you so much, uh, Madam Chair. I have a question for m maybe Mr. Ripley, if you can, if, I don't know if you can answer this, but would the, if this passes, would it essentially mean that a platform, an online platform like a Netflix, for example, that may have a movie that um, is sexually explicit would be prevented from providing that type of material if young people have access to Netflix? Uh, Mr. Mr. Ripley. Um, <laughs> Madam Chair. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Chair, um, and thank you for the question, Mr. Coteau. Um, so just to situate where this uh, amendment is taking place, it would be taking place in the policy objectives of the Act along with other policy objectives that are set out, and then it is over to the CRTC to op operationalize that through various, various mechanisms. Um, yeah. There is a degree of, um, you know, action already in this space with respect to adult adult channels that may appear on cable or satellite packages, and the CRTC the, has right. put in place certain uh, measures with respect to those those channels that, um, you know, require require certain things of them given the type of uh, explicit content that uh, they 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 are distributing. That is traditionally done in the in the legacy broadcasting system by working with industry associations to develop those broadcast codes and, and standards. And so my expectation would be, you know, what would happen if if, if if these amendments were to pass is the CRTC would 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 look at probably to the extent that those codes already cover this kind of uh, these kind of issues, and to the extent that there are gaps, they would probably work through their industry associations to adapt the adapt the codes as 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 required. But that can include things like um, you know user interfaces designed for 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 children. It includes classification of of programming. Um, all, all those, all of those type of measures. So, so it sounds like what would happen would be a Netflix, for example, if um, it does have um, sexual content on its platform, they just look for ways to prevent access to, of course, younger people. Which I think there's age restrictions on, like my Prime, for example. You've got to put in a code if it's above a certain thing. Is it that type of stuff we're talking about, or could could it actually be? Uh, used, uh, interpreted in such a way that it would actually remove that content from a platform, an online platform, so no one would have access to it? Um, so thank you uh, for the follow-up question. You know, based on, based on the, if we're, if we're talking about subparagraph five, uh, you know, it, it's about protecting the health and well-being of children by preventing the broadcasting to children of, 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 of programs, right? So. Um, again, I, I, I would expect the kind of space we would be in with a, with a service like, with, like Netflix would be a discussion around kind of the protections they have to make sure that children cannot stumble onto content that would include sexually explicit materials such as, you know, the interface where you set your kid up and, you know, they click through for, for example. My read is that it does not m mandate the CRTC to prohibit, for example, Netflix. Right, so we're not talking about censorship over all like for everyone we're talking about just preventable methods to stop children from accessing material mm -hmm. okay thank you mr housefather has his hand up yeah um mr. thank you oh, thank you very much mr. Shampoo um, était avant mr. Housefather. Je excuse me, je me suis I'm mr shampoo was before mr housefather yes you were absolutely Merci. correct dr Fry. Merci, uh, Madam. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have the same concern with the CPC 7. I would say that's a paragraph 6. Well, we can't be against it since we're trying to protect the production of pornographic material under such reprehensible conditions. However, sub uh, paragraph 5 does create a problem for me. We want to protect the health and well-being of children by preventing the broadcasting to them of programs that include sexually explicit content. So what is that exactly? Who decides what uh, constitutes sexually explicit material? Today around this table, we could decide that a certain type of content is sexually explicit. Another group might decide that it is something else. For example, a mother who's breastfeeding. So the definition of sexually explicit content uh, is problematic to me. 
because there will be divergent opinions and it will be very difficult to pin that down. I would be in favor of CPC 7 if subparagraph 5 were removed. I understand that its intent is good, but it has no place in, in this and uh, it is a slippery slope. It is more like censorship than the protection of health and well-being of children. I am fully in, I fully support uh, subparagraph 6 and I could support the amendment if par subparagraph 5 were eliminated. Mr. Housefather. Merci madame la présidente. Uh, je... Thank you madam chair. I fully agree with what Mr. Champou just said. Preventing the broadcasting to children of programs that include sexually explicit content and essentially in a bill where we have conservatives reticent to give powers to the CRTC, we're giving unlimited powers to the CRTC to determine what is sexually explicit. How do we stop children from seeing this? Does this mean a 17-year-old who is not an adult but is a 17-year-old is not allowed to watch Game of Thrones? I, 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 find, I find this to be absolute censorship. I, 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 don't, I don't agree with it at all and I don't agree with giving the CRTC the powers much as Richard Ripley may minimize what it is they would do. I don't agree with that. I think we're giving them effectively wide open powers to determine what is sexually explicit, which is not their mandate or their, or their role or what their expertise is, and then to figure out how to stop children somehow from seeing this. And in the end, we're going to restrict adults from seeing materials that are not illegal, but are simply sexually explicit. So I, I, don't, I don't agree with how this is worded. I also question whether or not the CRTC is the one because there are other means to stop pornographic material that is produced through sexual exploitation or coercion that is illegal in Canada. It is an illegal activity. I don't believe the CRTC has the means to know what material was produced that way. So if anything, in a bill where we've been talking about all these draconian powers that we could be giving to the CRTC, this is the first amendment that gives real censorship powers to the CRTC, a body that I don't think is equipped to do this. I think there's an online harms bill that is coming and if stuff like this should be somewhere, it should be in an online harms bill where you create a regulator that is expertised and is, knows how to do this. I, I don't think the CRTC is the right body at all. Thank, thank you, Ma Madam Chair. Dr. Fry, you are muted and Mr. Pearson has his hand up. Muted because I don't want to hear you, he listen to you hearing me chomp away on Creole fries. So there we go. Um, uh, so, Mr. Pearson. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. I would just like reject the entire premise that this is censorship uh, ag again. Um, we don't consider it censorship when we keep porn pornographic material out of the hands of children in any other venue, whether that be at the corner store or whether that be on the airwaves when it comes to your television in your home. Uh, so th though that is what this amendment seeks to do. We don't consider that censorship when we don't sell underage children pornographic material at the corner store. We don't consider it censorship when we don't allow uh, certain channels to be broadcast into homes at certain times of the day. So that, uh, that is uh, what this amendment uh, seeks to do. Um, the term sexually explicit content or pornographic content, uh, they're, they're quite interchangeable. Um, are well defined in Canadian law. That's not a, a, something that we've been uh, dealing with, uh, I, I think par Parliament has been dealing with going back 60 years. So that's that's not a, and the courts as well. So that's not something that's a, a major issue. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to having my colleagues support on this, this amendment. Thank you. Mr. Koto has his hand up, Dr. Frank. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Michelle Koto. Yeah, so uh, what's the definition of a, of a child? Does anyone know that? What age? Are we talking 0 to 12? We're talking, you know, back to uh, Mr. Housefather's point, you know, should a 17-year-old be told through, you know, an amendment like this not to watch Game of Thrones? I think it's a very good point. Does the act define a, a child? I, I don't know at this point. Uh, Mr. Ripley, perhaps? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Coteau, I wasn't clear who the question yes, was yeah. directed towards. 
Uh, so the, 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 the bill does not provide for a definition of, 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 of children, so I'm not in a position to advise on kind of what age range that, uh, that, would, that would include in, in this instance. Uh, look to uh, look to Mr. Veerson to clarify what his his intention would be with with that respect. I just want to, Ma Madam Chair, if I can just say that I in the sp I agree with the spirit of the amendment. I honestly do, and I what you've said I, I agree with pretty much everything. The problem is, uh, you know, if we pass something like this, it will be challenging to define you know age, and it will you know I have a 16 year old daughter. You know, she watches things that, you know, that, uh, you know, a 16-year-old watches. And I don't know if this would prevent her from watching something that, you know, that's innocent enough, but it could be considered, uh, you know, uh, sexually explicit. I don't know what the definition of sexually explicit is in this, uh, in this bill. So it's hard for me to support, even though the spirit of what is being trying, what, what, what the member's trying to achieve is something I agree with. It's just, it, it, it just opens up too much interpretation. And uh, back to the conservatives point, you know, we haven't seen regulation, you know, that may define, you know, some of these, uh, these pieces. So I'm, I'm a bit hesitant to support the, uh, uh, the proposed amendment, even though I agree with the spirit of, of what the member's trying to achieve. Thank you. Mr. Madam Chair, you're muted. Sorry, guys. Um, um, Kirk, do you? Is there anybody else on the floor with a hand up? No, madam. Chair. No. So, seeing that there is no further debate on this particular amendment, um, could we call the question, please, on uh, CPC seven? Shall CPC seven carry, uh, Clerk? Please. Absolutely. On the question of CPC seven. Mr. Biddle. Opposed. Mr. Couto. Opposed. Ms. Hefner. Opposed. Mr. Housefather. Opposed. Mr. Lewis. Opposed. Mr. Nader. In favor. Mr. Perkins. In favor. Mr. Upal. In favor. Uh, Mr. Upal, could you just turn your camera on, please, sir? Thank you, sir. In favor? In favor. Okay, thank you, sir. Mr. Wall? Opposed. Mr. Champoux? Mr. Contre. Mr. Julian? In favor. Uh, Dr. Fry, that is seven nays, four yeas. CPC 7 does not carry, and we now move to NDP 